the platform. Step up and, and speak out. It is the FM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. The name is Larry Quirirai and yet another episode of The Platform to this weekend. Or rather, this week we're talking about media and issues to do with the media. Uh, keeping in mind that it's going to be, uh, well, it is actually Press Freedom Day, World Press Freedom, Freedom Day, tomorrow on the 3rd of May. But before I uh, get into the discussion and uh, talk, about the th- talk about the issues with the three guests I have in the studio today, let me just remind you of the frequencies you can listen to us on Chivu. 99.8 uh, Kama TV Wange 105.1 Muntora Shanga 97.6 Nyanga 98.2 Gweru 104.3 Mukadoma 105.2 and uh, Wulawa in my hometown 106.7 and we're broadcasting from Harare where our frequency is 106.4 listen to us over the internet of, internet, of course it's a www.zfmstereo.co.zw and you can listen to us via the TuneIn app which is available for free and uh, just uh, download it and uh, look for ZFM Stereo and you can listen to us live and in charge and uh, if you want to get in touch with us uh, WhatsApp pl- uh, platform is 0731 168045 but also on social media other social media on Facebook uh, like our page facebook.com forward slash ZFM Stereo and also uh, follow us on Twitter at ZFM Stereo and on Instagram at ZFM Stereo ZW and you can also listen to this program and any other uh, talk time programs on uh, our YouTube platform. Just look for ZFM Stereo on YouTube. Now, for today, the 25th celebration of the World Press Freedom Day happens on 3 May tomorrow, and Zimbabwe is part of the global uh, commemoration, which is uh, spearheaded by UNESCO. Now, as I said, the 25th uh, edition and has the global theme, Keeping Power in Check, Media, Justice, and the Rule of Law, and will cover issues of media and the transparency of the political process, the independence uh, and, uh, and media literacy of uh, the judicial uh, judicial system and the accountability of uh, state institutions towards the public. The day will also uh, examine contemporary challenges of ensuring uh, ensuring press uh, freedom online. Now, the part that I picked up there is uh, the transparency of the political process. Given that in the next couple of months, we'll be having elections within Zimbabwe. So a lot of our discussion today is going to be about election issues. So I want to ask you a question at home while you listen to experts that i've got in the studio today is what do you expect from the media as we go into the elections what kind of media environment would you like to see in zimbabwe just get in touch with us on 0731 168045 get in touch with us tell us what kind of media environment you would like to see and what kind of media coverage you would like to see and as far as the elections is, election is concerned but also if you want uh, any of the issues that are being brought up that come up with the guests that we have in the studio please get in touch with us on that number and now uh, in the studio today i've got the programs manager for media airlines of Zimbabwe, Mr. Nigel Nyamatumbu, as well as uh, normally we refer to him as the VMCZ director, but he's the World Association uh, uh, of Press Council Secretary General, Mr. Lofty Duba. Uh, first, congratulations on that position and also welcome to the program. And also from Mr. Zimbabwe, the legal and ICT policy, policy officer, Mr. Kudahove. All of you, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So, um, first question is, and I'm going to start off with uh, Mr. Zimbabwe. Uh, is it a day worth celebrating uh, tomorrow, especially given the new dispensation in Zimbabwe? It's the same question I'm going to ask for everybody else, but starting off with Mr. Zimbabwe. Okay, um, thanks, Larry. Um, so, tomorrow the world will be celebrating World Press Freedom. And maybe we might be deceived or misdirected by the term celebrating. What we're actually doing tomorrow is to raise awareness about the things that hinder press freedom, especially in Zimbabwe, since we are operating in Zimbabwe as media practitioners, as well as the steps or the strides that have been taken in protecting world press uh, press freedom within Zimbabwe. So it's a day to reflect 
on what press freedom means, why press freedom is important, and why everyone, and not just media practitioners, should be involved in this dialogue around press freedom, because press, uh, a free press is the one that guarantees access to information, access to accurate information that helps us de- make decisions whether on who to vote for or on what uh, to buy at which store, because all that information is carried by a free press. And the same question uh, coming to uh, uh, Maz, why is it still important uh, given you know the euphoria around it saying no we can say things now we can't say we couldn't say in the old days well <clears throat> the significance of uh, world press freedom day is um, <clears throat> at a number of levels number one obviously it's significant for the journalists themselves um, for media practitioners to say well we do have a profession that the world recognizes its importance, the the day-to-day hustle of bringing the news home to the people, of bringing um, what the development within the national discourse, within the world discourse, and and, and so forth. So it is, in essence, um, a day that, uh, as journalists, uh, Consider to be of significance. It is their day and it is pregnant with meaning. It is also uh, significant for policymakers, uh, for, for governments, uh, international agencies, um, and then, then all those state related institutions because it is, it is a time where they, they reflect on how they have been doing in growing the media as an industry, as a business, and also more and more importantly, as a platform for enhancing citizens' rights to access information, the citizen rights to express themselves, uh, the media being a vehicle uh, towards uh, achieving that, the media being at the center of a whole number of stakeholders, uh, um, you know, that are varied from business to 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 the ordinary citizens and so forth. And it should actually be significant even for the generality of citizens around the world, more so in Zimbabwe, uh, at a time that we are seized with an, 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 an election that will be happening within the next three or so months. Uh, where without a free media, we cannot have a free Zimbabwe. Without a free media, uh, we cannot have proper discourse uh, within the country. So it is, by and large, a significant day on a number of levels. And then uh, the same question to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Loftedube. Yeah, uh, I agree with my colleagues. Um, One of the most essential uh, aspects of this day is to celebrate and reflect. I I know a lot of people would would say, what are we really celebrating? But if you take into into cognizance the the new constitution we have in this country, which came into being in 2013, it explicitly recognizes freedom of the media and access to information in section 61 and section 62 of the constitutions. These are the bedrock that would guide any democratic laws that would come into effect in terms of any media media laws. We need to celebrate the, 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 the inscribing of uh, Section 61 and 62 into our constitution. Those are very big milestone developments that happened uh, around the issue of uh, freedom of, uh, of the press and access to information for the first time in our in our since independence we have a, a law that exp- explicitly speaks to the issues of uh, freedom of the media and access to information and these are, are developments we need to to, to build on uh, i said we are celebrating and reflecting the issue we are reflecting on are, are still the, the issues that we still have in, in our midst the bad media laws uh, the, the, the bad treatment harassment assaults and all things that happen to to members of, of the press as we celebrate we also reflect on the importance of, of the media on this day and it's not a, a day that needs 
to be celebrated by by, by the, the the media itself the members of the publics are the main beneficiaries of a free media we are reflecting and saying to them look it is not only the media that should fight for for these rights but the public should have these rights protected so that the public can uh, have a credible and uh, 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 and uh, um, uh, true information coming to them and that has to happen through a free and independent media a media that is uh, uh, that, that is unfettered access to to any information that they want so that they can hold everyone to account so i think uh, on a, on a, on those two levels we really need to celebrate the fact that we do have these uh, two uh, provisions in the constitutions while we reflect on where we are as a media to, to achieve a, a, a total democratic uh, a space for the media is not a, a, an easy walk it's, it's, it's a milestone we have to take a journey and when you take a journey you need to, to to stop and reflect on how far you have gone while you look forward on where you're going and this is where why we're having press freedom day to stop and look back and look forward again Oh seven three one one six eight zero four five. Get in touch with us. The first message we have here: it says we expect the media to be neutral and not take any side in terms of politics and any other news. Uh, so that's uh, in response to the question that I asked at the top of the program to say, what do you expect from the media in as far as this election that's coming up, uh, especially given the fact uh, the objectives of uh, World Press Freedom Day and now. Uh, a special advisor to the president at an event today, uh, Ambassador Christopher Muchangwa, Christopher Muchangwa, said there are issues in the private and public media. Has the media reformed itself since November, for example? I've got questions before that, but has it reformed itself? Uh, first, I'm going to ask uh, from Mrs. Zimbabwe Kudav. Has it found it is in itself a capacity to reform itself outside whatever it was uh, before that? Well, I would say it hasn't really fully reformed itself to the position or to the level where we would expect it to be at if we truly had a free media space. Um, Since November, our observations have been that there have been a less less number of uh, violations against media practitioners compared to what was happening under the past uh, government. And it's sort of like the media and both the media and government are sort of trying to see how far each side can go. And uh, that whatever progress has been made in media freedoms in Zimbabwe has been made cautiously simply because the repressive uh, media laws that uh, uh, Mr. Dube spoke about are still there. The repressive laws are still hanging over the heads of media practitioners. So it's really a cautionary ex- uh, exercise, walking on eggshells, as it were, where people are, s- are taking a bit more liberty, but then they're taking it with caution. And it's not really a truly uh, true or reformed environment as much as we would like to see it be. So, uh, um, to give a little bit of background, he, he said in, at the meeting today, he says, uh, you know, the plot of the role of the, of the media during the transition last November and said, you know, that in particular the private media had come, uh, come on board quite strongly. Has that carried on? And uh, in as far as that is concerned, uh, Mr. Dube, first of all? I, I think uh, if I had uh, uh, Mutsonga properly, he was uh, congratulating the media for 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 for, for helping the, their cause but uh, I, I think um, while least uh, the media might be might feel pampered by that I, I think the media should have played its role irrespective of what Mutsuanga would ha- would have thought i, I wanted to, to look at the the perspective you, you you have given in terms of how the media is reformed my question is to reform from where and to where because the media has continued to be what it was what i noticed uh, uh, could have happened is a is is, is an issue where uh, like like my colleague has already alluded where we do not have a, a lot of uh, infringements but they will continue uh, as long as the bad laws are, are there when they are, if if they're not used and when they're not used at that time it doesn't mean that they will not be used we, we still want them out of the statutes uh, for, for, for him to to, to to judge the media the way he judged it was for for the uh, he, he, he clearly said it it's, it's it covered the stories the way they wanted them to be covered they didn't want that to be referred to as a coup and the media didn't refer it as that because that was what they were saying and he says uh, that was quite commendable for the media not to do it, not to do that so it's a uh, 
a, a tricky situation where for the first time a politician is very happy with the way the media uh, covered an issue uh, that worries me a lot Mr. I'm going to ask you uh, the next question uh, to say following up on that that w- within the context of the conversation and that sort of thing the the issues around reform and so forth have often been around the partisan nature of the media so the narrative has always been he, he made reference today in his speech today about who was paying the salaries and so forth or in the instance he went even go further to say was able to bribe somebody else in telling his regaling stories about how he made money and so forth in as far as that sort of reform has there been a uh, reform or even a willingness to reform away from that partisan type of uh, discussion in the media in general i think it's unfortunate that uh, <clears throat> since the, the 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 coming in of the new administration in november we have had uh, what i would term positive policy pronouncements um and there is there was a, a, a generally different feel um as to you know an approach to to to, to politics and, and so forth we when we're coming from a politics that had been uh, really saturated with hate language hate speech nodashura and so forth uh to more of a language of saying well let us reform let us have a credible election let us have free fair uh, and, and 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 peaceful elections and, and and so forth and on that account it is commendable however uh, words enough are uh, words alone are not enough um because nothing tangible and nothing uh, on the ground seem to suggest that uh they there is that willingness to translate those reforms into reality um and it's 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 it's, it's, it's a bit unfortunate that they if anything there is there actually seems to be uh, a bit of a discord uh, in, in terms of what the presidency says and what the bureaucrats, the ones that are supposed to be implementing the, the reforms say. I'll give an example. The president is on a record uh, to, to say that we, 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 we are going to reform all legislation uh, that affect uh, the, the credibility of, of, of the forthcoming elections but you have a senior bureaucrat coming out and saying he struggles to see anything wrong with IPA for example um, and, and that on its own speaks to a, a, some level of contradiction to say on one end the head of state is saying no we need to reform the laws and a senior uh, official within that same government comes out and say he does not see anything wrong with certain uh, 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 legislation. The same that the president speaks to reform, to reforming. So you you, you have a feel that um, on one hand there is this talk to appease uh, the international community, uh, talk. To, to 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 sort of uh, relax the members of the public to say we are in a, in, a, in in a new era of, of doing things but without actual uh, reforms yes some of the things I do understand it's not an overnight thing for example to sort out the economy and have a sustainable media which is something that we have always been clamoring for um, it's, it's it's not uh, an overnight thing to do with some uh, structural issues uh, that had affected the, the, the media but at the same time there are some low hanging fruits that by now six months into this new administration surely we would have been speaking of draft amendments to certain bills that does not require much money already some money was invested in the MP process that a lot of stakeholders participated the framework 
uh, for for uh, reviewing this legislation is already there. What is left is implementation. So on that account, I would say we have had a slow implementation of reforms and one gets the stance, sense that we are a bit stuck. Oh seven three one one six eight zero four five. Somebody says, "I hope that the media will set up debates between candidates from councillors, MPs, and presidential candidates." Unfortunately, man, in an interview I had recently with uh, George Charamba, who is the president's spokesperson, says there's going to not going to be a presidential debate. So that's water under the bridge. He says, "I want to vote for the people with their clear vision, not party lines, and debates will help." in separating the wheat from the chaff. That is Felix from uh, Lulibadzimu. And then also Alfred Sabau on Twitter. Thank you very much for getting in touch. We want the media to report as it is. Says Rajiri, they must not be biased. Uh, get in touch with us on 0731 Tell us what you expect from the media in this coming election. Uh, it's World Press Freedom Day tomorrow. I've got experts in the studio talking about issues around that. Get in touch with, as I said, get in touch with me and uh, let's talk about this issue what do you want to see in this election year what do you expect from the media and as far and as far as their conduct is concerned what do you expect the media to deliver to you so that you can be able to make the decisions that are important and as far as this election is concerned it's cfm stereo my station your station the hottest radio in time we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back back with ex- with our experts Connect with CFM Stereo via Facebook on facebook.com forward slash CFM Stereo. It's CFM Stereo Talk. We are always moaning about the state of our roads. Uh, Your Worship Bernard Manyanyani, thank you, sir, for coming through to the program. Are you receiving money from Zinara? And if you are, what are you using it for? She said, she had so charing once. Mm. The crisis we are facing yeah. in the last two, three years around portals. Firstly, it's not a, a problem of one city. Mm-hmm. And secondly, it's not a problem of last year or the year before. Mm. It tells the story of the eight or so years that fans have gone to Zinara and they don't come back to the roads. Mm-hmm. That's, where, that's where we are, where we are. The talk that gets you talking. Mondays to Thursdays between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. To all you Twitter heads, connect with CFM Stereo on twitter.com forward slash CFM Stereo. Forward slash CFM Stereo. The platform. Step up, Step up and speak up. You are indeed tuned in to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. My name is Larry Kwirirai, and we are talking about Press Freedom Day, which takes place on the 3rd of May every year. This is the 25th anniversary of uh, the uh, uh, of Press Freedom Day, and it's spearheaded by UNESCO in the studio. Uh, rather before that, I'm going to tell you about the theme is keeping power in check, media justice and the rule of law, which cover issues of media and the transparency of uh, political process, the independence and media uh, literacy of the judicial system and accountability of state institutions towards the public. And uh, we're paying particular uh, attention to the transparency transparency rather of the political process and in the studio the, my three guests are the programs manager of Media Alliance of Zimbabwe Nigel Nyamotumbu and Lofta Dube who is the World Association of Press Council Secretary General as well as the director of the um, Voluntary Media Council of Zimbabwe and uh, Kuda Hove from Misa Zimbabwe is the legal and ICT policy officer. If you want to get in touch with us, our big question for today is uh, what environment would you like to, uh, the uh, the media to operate. What do you want from the media uh, with the, with this big election that's coming later in the next couple of months? What do you want the media to look like? We've already got uh, gotten some con- uh, con- contributions and read them before the break and we'd like you to get in touch with us and as far as that's concerned. Now, getting back uh, to uh, the earlier discussion and going into this election year, once again, special advisor to the President Ambassador Christopher Mchangwa applauded the role of the media, as we said earlier on. Uh, the question is, going into the election this year, what kind of space, we've been talking about what everybody says, what kind of space should be afforded to the press for elections to be free, fair, credible and transparent? 
I think that's a very critical question that we, we've always um, we wanted to, to dialogue with the stakeholders. So, I, I think one of the most critical uh, aspects in terms of uh, having equitable coverage of elections is to give the media access to all players in, in an election. Giving access to all uh, pl- political players allows the, the electorate to make informed decisions because the media would have unfettered access to everyone who's contesting and to all bodies that are contesting. What we have seen in the past, we have seen in the past where the political parties have decided on their own to say, look, if we are ZANU PF, we don't want to see the private press in our activities. If we are MTC, we don't want to see the, the public media in our activities. And, and we're saying as the media, the media is one. If you allow, if you, are, you, you want coverage, you want coverage from all media, allow all of them to come. They might not cover uh, the stories that they would have covered in the way and in the manner that you'd want them to cover them in. But however, what we're then saying uh, as the media is that we need uh, 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 open access to, to all uh, political players who are contesting an election. That's one of the most critical things. Uh, the second critical thing that we have seen is that we have seen the intimidation, assaults, arrests of, of, of journalists unnecessarily by the police. And we are simply saying that they should be allowed to constitutionally play their role without any disturbance and hindrance from any members of society. It is um, quite important. We want to uh, really, really uh, 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 hit this on uh, the, po- the contesting political parties that they should educate uh, uh, their membership, their, their members and uh, everyone in, in their parties in, in terms of how the media operates and the media should be allowed uh, unfettered access. And the same question to you. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Misa and then I'm come, uh, and I'll come to Masia. Okay, um, so we already have the laws in place. As someone mentioned earlier, Zimbabwe's laws on paper are good. They support media freedom. They call for free media. That's not interfered or that's not uh, where there's no state interference or any interference from other political parties. But then in actual fact, you'll realize that what's on paper and what's on the ground is very, very different. Because if you look at the situation right now, we still have issues that were identified just after the 2013 elections by the AU Observer Mission to Zimbabwe. And those issues still have not been addressed. Issues to do with access to the public broadcaster, which is ZBC. Issues to do with uh, uh, access to state-owned press like the Herald and your Chronicles and your Sunday News. So all those issues are still there. And those are still issues that are hindering the, 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 the media from playing a proper role. And then add to that fact the fact that um, state media reporters are actually now even jumping into the fray and they're jumping into the political ring and making their declarations. That brings about a very unbalanced picture as far as media uh, freedom and media neutrality is concerned. Obviously, there is now an issue with that. And those are some of the things that we need to address as we head into the elections. Okay, and over to you, uh, Nyamutimbu. Well, look, <coughs> uh, it, it, most, most of the stuff has been said by my colleagues, but I'll, 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 I'll add at least you know, one or two uh, 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 points to, to that. I think we need a reliable media. If you look at how the, the, the elections, the, the primary elections, of uh, the ruling party ZANU-PF was covered uh, which uh, number one obviously uh, social media is, 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 is now always beca- is now becoming more of a culture in the case there were a lot of results uh, flying around and, 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 and so forth so and so is lost such and such big wig is lost and, 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 and so forth uh, um, and there were certain uh, media houses, mainstream media houses, that took, you know, social media stories, hook, line, and sinker, you know, um, and resulting in in, 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 in in a public mis being uh, misinformed and then and so forth. That compromises. Um, the integrity of 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 of, of, of the media that compromises uh, media being uh, reliable. We want a reliable media such that uh, if we are 
to you know uh, remove the 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 emblems and then the, the, the banners and and then and, and so forth no one will be will be able to tell whether they are listening to zfm or they're listening to zbc because all news and information uh will be balanced will be accurate would be credible and and then and, and will be worth the the audience so to say well I want to listen to this program because there is a healthy debate on electoral manifestos. I want to listen to this investigative program uh, or I want to read this investigative story that really unpacks uh, the, the, the electoral story that digs deep uh, into... Uh, issues beyond what politicians say, beyond um, the, the, the the general uh, press statement, uh, you know, uh, uh, type of a story. Citizens are yearning for quality information, and I think one of the reasons why uh, they they is uh, you know this lack of somewhat interest within a critical industry such as. Uh, the, the the media is is because I think we we have not been given uh, the, the 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 full story. We have not been investigating uh, stories enough. We have not uh, been proving to be reliable, uh, and this is why we we are then playing second hand at times to social media. Um, and social media, the challenge obviously around fake news, around uh, alternative truth, if you like, and and, and so forth. Um, it, it, it's creating uh, this whole space um, in which at the end of the day citizens may not be able to make informed decisions which uh, the media ought to be you know creating that platform in that room for citizens to be able to then express themselves at the ballot the structural issues have have, 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 have already have already been uh, dealt with but I'll you know want to hammer home the point around intimidation to say we we, 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 we do not want any journalist or any media to 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 operate at the whims uh, of of any political party you know uh, yes we, we have had cases uh, at the opposition uh, party uh, where the, 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 there have been cases of of arrest of, of harassment of journalists we've also uh, had one or two cases even from the ruling party itself and we are saying that should stop journalists should be treated uh, as professionals that want uh, that are in favor of Zimbabwe and not any particular political party Oh seven three one one six eight zero four five. I've got a message here from. Uh, remember, the question is: What environment would you like to see uh, the media, or what would you like the media to deliver? And as far as this election is concerned, what would you like to be the, the media to be able to do? And as far as this election is concerned, uh, uh, this is uh, Ian Mwene Wamandla who says the uh, the media is uh, tell. Please tell the gentleman the media as the fourth arm of the state should lead the debates around politicians that are contesting. Is you do uh, thorough research on the backgrounds of these politicians so that we vote for candidates that we know. We seem to be getting more of this uh, of this from social media while the media, uh, the mainstream media, I guess that's what it means, is uh, twiddling. Uh, someone says uh, the media must give accurate and truthful information about the upcoming elections, our uh, processes and happenings. And then someone says, Kudona, Kwakaita, Madara, Ezanu, PF, Junora, Dizakuti, Vanu, Havachada, Kutamba, Navo, Media, and Gairege, Gairege, Kuta, Kova, Partisan, Nika, Ian, Demberi, especially corruption. The president uh, needs to do more anything uh, as far as corruption is concerned. And we're saying uh, na- nothing, no, uh, we've seen nothing, no action. Uh, get in touch with us at 0731 I've got a message here on Twitter as well that I had uh, reserved you. Uh, this is from uh, Erwin Nyavan who says we want to see live coverage of bo- ballot counting and uh, announcing of a uh, winner in each constituency. So get in touch with us uh, 0731 168 That's the number to get in touch with us. And let's talk about what you want to see 
And as far as uh, this coming election that's coming this year, as well, Press Freedom Day tomorrow, and uh, we will be commemorating uh, that in as, uh, as a whole country and uh, the whole world, essentially. And uh, I want to find out what your thoughts on all these issues are. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We're going to be interrogating more issues, especially issues to do with reform. There was an interesting... Uh, uh, the statement that was made in the presentation today uh, from the uh, special advisor to the president about there's no free lunch. So I'm going to ke- keep that in mind when we we'll take this break and come back and talk about that issue. See if I'm staring on my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. The platform. Step, Step up. up and speak up. You're still tuning in to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. This is the final segment of the show. 23 minutes left in the program. Mona Lisa Dubé is coming up with the Y Zone at uh, half past the hour of 8 o'clock. And we should be talking about issues, issues to do with youths. What are the things that affect their behavior when it comes to issues of sex, uh, alcohol abuse, uh, drug abuse, and all those other issues that are concerned. She's going to be talking to a panel here that will talk about those issues. So stay tuned to ZFM Stereo. That is taking place at half past 8 but we're still in the platform and we should talk about World Press Freedom Day the theme for which uh, the World Press Freedom Day being tomorrow the 3rd of May we commemorate it every single year someone said we celebrate it someone said we remind ourselves of the work that needs to be done so whichever way you want to think about it uh, 3rd May the 25th edition takes place tomorrow and the global theme is keeping power in check media justice and the rule of law and we'll cover issues of media and the transparency of the political process the independence and media literacy of the judicial system and the accountability of state institutions towards the public. And in the studio, my three guests are Programs Manager for Media Lines of Zimbabwe, Nigel Nyamutumbu, I've got uh, Lofty Dube, the FVMCZ uh, Director and World Association of uh, Press Councils Secretary General and as well as uh, the, the Legal and ICT Policy uh, Policy Officer of Mr. Zimbabwe in uh, Kodahove. Now, earlier today, I keep going back to earlier today, uh, the special advisor to the president uh, today. For, for those who are wondering, today there was an event that took place, and the special advisor of the president uh, d- d- gave the speech at this uh, at the commemorations held by Mrs. Zimbabwe. In as far as this day is concerned, now in terms of reforms, uh, uh, Ambassador Mchanga said the use the term "there is no free lunch," meaning as the media we have to fight for for reforms. Are we doing enough to catch the eye of the government? Starting off with Misa. Well, thank you, Larry. I think that, with all due respect to the Honourable Ambassador, his statements on what media has done towards reforms is a bit disingenuous. Um, This is because between the people that are sitting on this panel and the organizations that we represent, for years upon years, we've been pushing for media reforms in Zimbabwe. And we get feedback from government that these reforms have been received, but then the actual traction that they gather or the actual actions that they translate to are very, very minimal. Simply because, not because that we are not doing anything as a media fraternity in Zimbabwe, but simply because there is a lot of pushback from government. Since the time, for example, when laws such as POSA were even suggested, the AIPAs of this world were suggested or even brought up for discussion, there was a lot of input that was made, for example, about how much they infringe on media freedoms, how much they infringe on other fundamental rights which promote media freedoms. And if you look at the materials that have been submitted to government and the actual outcome that government has made in return, there is no harmony, there is no melody between those two events. So there really is no justification for what uh, the Honorable Ambassador said. So, uh, so therefore, when we, when we, the, the the question being the eye of the government and forcing them into action. So, you know, uh, you're sitting there. Somebody tells you something, and maybe you're concerned with something else. How? I guess the question that I've asked is, how are we making ourselves a priority in terms of the government is concerned? Have we done enough to make ourselves a priority? Um, oh, yes, we, we have. Um, the, the, the lobby and advocacy of the media groups which are in the studio here and uh, those uh, not, not within the confines of the studio has been immense work, Larry. Um, 
I will speak about uh, the position papers we have presented to, to, to government. Mr. Zimbabwe, year in, year out, has spoken about the three-tire system of broadcasting, where we are talking about commercial broadcasting, transforming a state broadcaster into a, a truly public broadcaster, like talking about ZBC, transforming it into the model of the SABC, with clearly spelled out uh, uh, provisions on how to make it a truly p- uh, public broadcaster. We have spoken about the issue of uh, 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 what community radio stations. We, we in uh, Johannesburg with uh, Nigel just last week addressing the SADC parliamentarians. There was shock when we spoke about the fact that Zimbabwe is one of the only countries in, in the region that does not even have a single uh, 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 community radio station. You talk about countries like, I mean, countries like South Africa, they have hundreds of community radio stations. Botswana, our neighbors, everyone almost in the region except us. This is something that we did not cook up when we met uh, Mutsuanga uh, this morning. No, it's issues that have been there in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the public domain that position papers we have given to government, they have them sitting in their offices. But I think the, it, it was disingenuous, like my colleague says, and I think it was mischievous of Mutsuanga to speak up of that, especially noting that in a, in a couple, just a year or two years ago, we had a, 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 an inquiry uh, set up by government where all these things that were, that we spoke about uh, uh, as media organizations sitting here are contained in a report this this report is so broad it contains almost everything we have been speaking about uh, every day uh, I, I, I think uh, the special advisor could have uh, maybe mentioned to us how we then lobby when we, we have been using the traditional ways of lobbying government of lobbying parliament of lobbying or other the ministry itself through a lot of position papers that are, 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 are in their offices. So it's, a, it's quite a mischievous for, for, for the special advisor to say that we uh, there's no free lunch. They, they, if you look at the example he gave in terms of how you, you fight for that, he spoke about the war of independence. He spoke about the, 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 the period that uh, brought in the new dispensation. And uh, we don't have guns. How does he want us to go and, and lobby and advocate on, on those issues without using the proper channels we have been using in the last 20 years? And uh, to you, and then I want to read a couple of messages, uh, Mr. Hamilton. Yeah, look, it's, it's not a question of us uh, having uh, rights for, for, for free, because we are entitled to these rights. And what the Constitution says, it is that the state should ensure, um, you know, because these are, they are what we call right holders and right bear and duty bearers um you know so it's not it should not be about us uh, as, as 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 citizens or us as 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 professional and support organizations it should not be our business to fight for 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 our rights yes we can uh lobby yes we can v- create various forms of holding the government to account we can have various forms uh, of playing that watchdog role we can play various forms of research actually in a number of other countries uh, that are uh, developed civil society is not so much about lobby and advocacy but it is about research and think tanking because that is what uh, drives a country forward. A country should always consistently uh, be, be thinking on how we can be doing things better, on how we can be having a better technology, on how we can uh, be sustaining the media and, uh, and, and having a, 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 a a better uh, economy and, and and so forth, research in a various number of fields than for us now to be constantly be in a, some sort of a war zone fighting for what is just rightfully ours. It's guaranteed in the constitution, it's guaranteed in a number of international agreements and it is what makes us a people, it is what makes us Ubuntu or Uno. All this that we already speak to uh, about, you know, this media uh, law uh, reforms and, and, and so forth, they are, at the end of the day, what will make us a people. Oh, seven three one one six eight zero four five. Reading some of your messages here, 
Uh, Rio from Popo Maimbulao says, I would like to say the bias being done by you mentioned state media should stop because they cover positively by one party whilst negatively on other parties. As uh, Dyson Morida in Budirilo says, we want to see a media where journalists are neutral and don't openly assign themselves to a political party. We can't have journalists uh, running for primary elections and is, and is not afraid of going back to work. Credibility and uh, neutrality dololo. And he goes on to say, pres- uh, someone else Mandla Mpofu in Yamandlov a regular contributor to the discussion. Thank you very much for getting in touch with us. Uh, it says uh, press freedom will only be reflected uh, positively when policies and stop telling us that they were misquoted. And one minister on Monday said the, minister, the media was being paid to undermine his position at the government. The public needs fair reporting only. I listen to ZFM Stereo, my station, the hottest radio in town. I get in touch with us on 0731 on Twitter. Uh, okay, I already read, read your messages uh, on on Instagram. Uh, I said that you also got in touch with us on Twitter. But get in touch with us on 0731 Get in touch with us and tell us what you want to see in a uh, free, uh, in t- in a, to get a free, uh, fair election as well as credible election uh, this uh, year. To, uh, tell us what you want to see the media do in as far as uh, this issue is concerned. Now, so the social media regulation in elections and that came up today and it was a thorny issue. Um, there were so many issues that came around it like there was the understanding of what social media is, uh, the references that are made and people are eyeing and ooing and whatnot. Now, how credible, how critical is regulation to curb fake news as we uh, go towards the harmonized elections and is regulation of social media one of the solutions uh, starting with uh, Miss over there um, that's a bit of a tricky situation the world over um, fake news isn't just a problem in Africa or Zimbabwe it's a, it's a worldwide problem right now and the main hurdle to actually dealing with it from a legislative point of view or from a legal point of view is whose definition will be used to determine what is fake news and what is not. Because what might be fake news from Kuririai's position might not be fake news from my position and vice versa. So that's sort of where the sticking point is. But should we have uh, measures in place to ensure that what we see online is uh, accurate and uh, proper? Yes, we should. But now, should the law really come into that and 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 uh, determine what is fake news or not, that's more tricky. Um, for example, it be, then becomes easy to abuse fake news laws as it's just as it is easy to abuse criminal defamation laws. Um, that being the case, we really need to tread carefully on what kind of laws we pass all in under the guise or under the excuse of fighting fake news. It's a really tricky situation to regulate using law. Uh, to you, Nigel, same question. Yeah, I think I think for now the the, the bigger question for for me in terms of uh, cyber legislation should not be about necessarily regulating social media, which in itself is just but uh, 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 a small. Uh, you know, really issues around a lot bigger uh, sphere which the globe uh, globally um, you know, there are discourses and discussions around uh, how to do with with that. I mean, we, we, we are talking of an, an, an industry that is growing to, 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 to billions and so forth and there's a lot of other issues, um, you know, whether you look at it from a, a, a terrorism, real terrorism, not some Facebook posts or, or, or some social media posts, you know, real threats uh, where lives can be at stake, uh, you know, interfere with a, with a system at a, at, 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 a, at, at a hospital, only that perhaps we are not even at that level where we speak of internet of things. Things and and and, and 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 so forth. So for for Zimbabwe, I think it 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 the the discourse should not be really about how we regulate social media. Um, perhaps yes, we can promote good use of 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 of, of social media. We can uh, come up with various campaigns on how to detect 
fake news um, and which also comes to the point where we just need a reliable mainstream media a mainstream media where if one sees something uh, on, 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 on social media and they're suspicious that it may not be true then they have uh, a reliable mainstream uh, media to, to give them the correct information. That surely uh, it does not require uh, 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 some sort of legislation to say how can we uh, look at uh, encrypted information for example of people on WhatsApp which information if we if 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 if, if deleted you can only access it to at, 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 to Mark Zuckerberg or something you know you cannot even have uh, that machinery to properly uh, implement so why why get into something that you'll not be able to see through uh, such as you know trying to regulate social media we can promote good use of social media but i don't think us coming up with legislation or, or, or some form of a regulatory mechanism for social media is the way forward on my end larry i think even if we were to come up with the regulation i think it is the private citizens who would suffer i'm looking at the reproduction mechanisms for you to really source where this came from a lot of our citizens are easily excitable by fake news because most of the issues that fake news tries to bring forward are the incredulous that the citizens want to share quickly and now if you want to look at the real source 500 people have retweeted you are going to arrest all of them because they are peddling fake news and uh, this is where i have a serious critical pro- program and i think um, with what events which are, which are happening in the us where mark Zuckerberg says uh, facebook will, will be doing a lot of things to close some of these uh, fake accounts it's, it's going to be an easy process for them because they will be going backwards uh, a lot of people have fake accounts and this is where fake news uh, generate from you have someone who's got uh, uh, 20 accounts that you use to attack people. So I think as long as those fake accounts are there and the issue of reproduction where the citizens are busy reproducing this, they are the ones who are going to suffer because the, uh, uh, as long as it's in my account I share it with people. It's me who's spreading fake news. But my other main concern, major concern is that the mainstream media should not be reproducing fake news. We've seen mm. one or two newspapers which have picked wrong things and they should be very, very uh, scrupulous in terms of of, of, of checking such uh, information. Uh, uh, but before, I mean, I think uh, building up on that, that the individual person in this is the person that might be affected. Well, looking at Tanzania and I'll come to Misa here, Kudawe. Tanzania recently passed laws on heavy regulation of social media. Yeah. Uh, one of them is to run a personal blog. So, for example, a personal text al- alone blog is uh, $900 in nice license fees. Now, and as far as that is concerned, how do we can find a way not to end up in such a situation where somebody is doing a blog about flowers, all right? They're not really doing a... They're not covering pol- politics. They're not covering sport. They're not cov- it, it, They might be covering sport, but maybe the local sport in the in, in, in Chirumanzu where no major newspaper is going to come and cover them because the major newspapers only look for national stories. How how do we work towards making a situ- we have a situation where we don't have regulation coming in that says for someone to set up their own blog in Zimbabwe is going to cost $900 like it does in Tanzania. Okay. Um, the Tanzanian example is just one example. But just uh, let me just start off with the fake news one first and then move on to the Tanzanian model. So Malaysia recently passed laws that are anti-fake news laws. And Malaysia just recorded its first arrest um, today or yesterday, or first conviction rather, under that new law, which seeks to punish people for publishing or reproducing fake news. And then moving to Tanzania and then moving to Zimbabwe, one characteristic of most of these countries which pass laws which regulate what's said online, which regulate criminal defamation and similar laws, is that at some level, these laws are introduced more to help shut down any critical voices to the government. That's the major reason as far as researchers has, has, has revealed. 
that's the major reason why all these countries are taking the time to introduce those laws. So one way to avoid um, repressive government, uh, repress, uh, sorry, not repressive, but one way to avoid critical voices from getting online, and you should remember why people are seeking the alternative of actually going online to criticize or talk about government, it's because they don't have access to state media. They don't have access to state broadcasting. So the only other available frontier that they can make use of is the online environment. You have your blogs, you have your live streams, your Facebook Live, you have your YouTube channels, you have your websites. So another way that governments are now uh, using or opting for is to actually make it expensive to get online. Whereas Facebook, YouTube offer these services for free then your government will say, no, 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 no. You're actually a broadcaster simply because you have a smartphone which allows you to Facebook Live. You're considered a broadcaster and then you're prohibited. And moving away from the Tanzanian example, which seems a bit foreign, Zimbabwe's broadcasting uh, licensing regulations actually also ask that people that use streaming services, content creators that use streaming services, actually also pay a yearly fee and ours is way way more expensive than that $900 that you quoted so it's all about government trying to put up as many hurdles as possible to broadcasting and free voices so before we go I want to find out what are we doing for uh, uh, celebrations yes thank you I was uh, really anxiously waiting for that question yes tomorrow uh, the the main celebrations will be at the Harare Polytechnic uh, College, where the Minister of Information, Media, and Broadcasting Services uh, will make the official uh, remarks, and will also have various presentations and discourse around uh, this this theme. And we hope that at the end of this um, commemorations, we will not only have uh, reflected, but we have a framework for beginning to implement what it is that Zimbabwe needs in terms of the media for us to, to have a credible election. And then on Friday, we, we have another press club discussion uh, by Amnesty International and Zakras, and there will be other provincial uh, commemorations that will be happening throughout the country from uh, Friday and then and, and Saturday. Okay, so uh, make sure you uh, get involved in celebrations of World Press Freedom Day as to remind you that it's keeping in power, keeping power in check, media justice and the rule of law. That's the theme, the 25th edition of uh, World Press Freedom Day. Just to remind you who I've had in the studio, just your, the voice you heard was the program's manager of Media Alliance of Zimbabwe, Nigel Nyamutumbu. And before that, Kudal Ove was the legal and ICT policy officer for MISA Zimbabwe. And finally, also in the studio joining us today was the World Association of Press Councils Association's uh, Secretary General, but often we introduce him as the Voluntary Media Council of Zimbabwe uh, Director. Love to do it. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. You are oh, pleasure. Yes, so that's uh, me for this week. I'll be back with you next week, Monday. It's ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. Uh, coming in is Mona Lisa Dubé with uh, The Wise Zone. I say take care of yourself and the people that you love. And as I always say, where I come from, my name is Larry Kwiri Rai. I see you, Take care of yourself.